Senator Justin Eichhorn is promoting a measure that would potentially allow schools to adopt a physical education curriculum to teach kids about outdoor activities like angling, hunting, and archery, activities that have a strong cultural heritage in Minnesota. He joins me now to talk more about it. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. This bill would instruct the Commissioner of the Department of Natural Resources to create a grant program that schools could use to add curriculum and activities like archery, hunting, angling, trap shooting, and firearm safety in Minnesota schools. So where did this idea come from? Well, it kind of started over the summer. Uh, last year, Iowa actually required schools to do firearm safety as part of their Phi Ed curriculum. Now, we didn't want to, you know, put any mandates on our schools, but we wanted to give that option. You know, a lot of folks in the state had firearm safety as part of their curriculum when they were growing up, but it's mostly went away. For me, I think the safety in the firearm safety is extremely important. The odds somebody in Minnesota is going to encounter a firearm in their life is pretty high. We want people to know how to properly handle them, um, and that obviously that will prevent injuries in the future. Also, we thought the other pieces of the bill were important. Um, you know, Iowa required just firearm safety. We thought, you know, let's make it Minnesota. Let's build on it. And that's why we added the angling, the hunter safety, the hunting education as part of that. We're going to have them teach some history and culture of hunting in Minnesota. Uh, the trap shooting piece was actually added by another committee member. Uh, but trap shooting, as you probably already are aware, is one of the fastest growing sports in the state and everybody can play, which is kind of cool. So. Yeah, actually, I, when I was reading more about this, trap shooting is already a big club sport. There are, according to the Pioneer Press, 343 teams. It's co-ed. Team members can even letter in the sport. So some of these things could just be added as a club. Why the make it part of the PE curriculum? Well, not everybody joins the club. Somebody might be on the football team or the basketball team and wouldn't be exposed to this. One thing we're really seeing is especially kids in the metro school districts aren't being exposed to it at all. Um, for example, my former legislative assistant, when we were working this bill out, he said, you know, I would have loved to have had this opportunity. My parents didn't hunt or fish, but if someone would have showed me, I might be a hunter or fisher today. And I think if we start getting those kids into the path of hunting and fishing, we might grow the next generation of Minnesotans who care about conservation and care about hunting in our state. Uh, the other thing we hear from the DNR quite a bit is our licenses are going down. And if we get some of those kids in and get them interested and hooked on it, hopefully we'll again start raising our licenses again and make that ne next generation of Minnesotans that want to care about the outdoors. It's an interesting thing that you just said because uh, you're talking about city kids, urban kids, not having, because you're from greater Minnesota, where this is still maybe a greater part of a person's lifestyle than it is for these city kids. So just exposure. I would say just exposure, and you're right, it, it is a, a greater part of life in greater Minnesota. A lot of kids do get this at home, but there's still a lot of kids that don't, and we want those other kids that aren't exposed at home to, to be exposed to this. Is there an ideal age range for this program? Uh, would it be like annual age appropriate programming or just middle school or different um, segments at different years? Who decides, how does that work? So that would be, you know, kind of up to local control. It would be up to the school district. The DNR individual would come into that school district. But normally what we kind of envision and what we're seeing in the very select few schools throughout the state that are actually doing this already is it's more at the middle school age when you know, kids are starting to get their hunter safety, their boat and water safety, snowmobile safety, those type of certificates that they would be looking to get. That's kind of the age range it would be more geared at, but it's certainly scalable up or down. The bill states that the DNR commissioner must consult with and incorporate recommendations from Minnesota's tribal groups. Uh, what's, what are you after there? So that's part of the hunting piece of the bill. We think that if we're going to teach hunting, we should also teach why hunting is important to our culture in Minnesota as a whole, but we also have a large you know, indigenous people's population in the state, and we think it's important to also include why hunting is important to their culture as well. In my district, I have I literally each like band, and you know, throughout all of Minnesota, there's several different bands, and we think that it's important to incorporate why hunting is important not only to their culture, but to our culture as a whole in Minnesota, and bring that all together. Why these particular activities that I laid out? You said in committee you want to encourage kids. One, one aspect of this is to get off their devices and fall in love with the great outdoors. But why not snowshoeing or cross-country skiing, which I know some schools already have, or camping or geocaching or canoeing? Why these particular ones? Well, we had to start somewhere. Hopefully some of those things you, you mentioned we can add at a later point. Like I said before, some schools are already doing snowmobile safety and um, boat and water safety. 
but I, what I really wanted to get at was specifically the firearm safety because it, because it's a safety issue. Um, those other activities kind of go in line with that, and that's why I thought that was a good starting spot. Uh, but I do think if it's something that school districts like and, and, and do want to continue, we can certainly build on this in future legislative sessions. Now, the issues surrounding guns are polarizing in our society. So inevitably, there will be parents who don't want their children exposed to a firearm safety course. Would they have the opportunity to opt out? Again, that would be a local control issue. That would be up to the local school districts. But much like other hot button issues in education, maybe sex education or something like that, where parents have the option to opt their child out of it, I would assume most school districts would go that route, but again, we left it open to local school districts to decide. Uh, the Senate, the House, the governor were in the midst of budget negotiations, and Senate leaders are expressing caution right now because of the possibility of an economic slowdown. So considering that there are limited dollars, why is this effort important? Well, a couple things. Um, I think most importantly, um, if we get the next generation of these kids interested and engaged in hunting and fishing, those are going to be the next generation of people buying licenses in our state. So on the back end, it's certainly good for the state. There are a lot of priorities, but again, this is just, it's just a pilot. We're only putting a million dollars to it this biennium just to see how it goes. Um, and again, we'll take another hard look at it in two years. So it's a small amount of money compared to the total budget, but something that I think will go a long ways to promoting you know, all those things we love about the outdoors in the state. Senator Eichhorn, thank you. Thank you.